Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, paleontologists of all ages, please enjoy your stay at Dublin Comic Con and welcome to the stage, Sean J.P. Markey, a.k.a. the Dino Guy, as he presents to you the world's greatest dinosaur fights and who won them! So, for those of you who don't know what this uh, show is all about, this is a scientific journey of discovery. We are going to talk about not the dinosaur fights that we saw in the movies, but the dinosaur fights that actually happened. We're going to weigh up their, their various dinosaurs' abilities and strength levels. You lied to us! Ha! Ha 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 ha! You thought you were getting movies, you're getting science! Ha ha ha! Close the doors! Unless there's a Velociraptor, nobody's opening those doors. So, uh, so basically, but don't worry, it's, there's, we're going to have a bit of fun too, uh, because um, as uh, this really old uh, artist painting will show, dinosaurs like to fight dirty. Oh, low blows. 65 million years in the making. So uh, let's get ready to rumble. So here comes our fight card, ladies and gentlemen. First up. We got everyone's favorite Lummox, the Stegosaurus, up against its arch rival, Allosaurus, the Lion of the Jurassic. Followed by everyone's favorite villainous door opener. Oh no, I just saw a door open as I said Velociraptor and I thought, uh oh. But so Velociraptor is going up against its arch nemesis, Protoceratops, the forerunner to the famous Triceratops. Then we're going to have a little interval where we're going to have kids versus the dino guy. Don't worry, this isn't child abuse. I'm going to actually just be testing their knowledge in a battle of wits. And if they can answer questions correctly, they'll win prizes. And then, uh, of course, after that, we've got one of the main event, the, the main event, the title fight, to see who is the true king of the dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus Rex or Triceratops. The bookies are open. Get down to Paddy Byrne. Place your bets now. There are good odds going on Triceratops at four to one. And then we will have some movies by popular demand. Everyone want to know who would win in a fight, the Mosasaur from Jurassic World or the Megalodon Shark from The Meg. And as we all know, Megalodon Shark is no match for Jason Statham, but he's not here, so that's, he's going to have to fight the Mosasaur. And then if we have some time, there's going to be some Q&A where if anyone in the audience is smart, they can ask me a difficult question and expo expose me for the fraud that I actually am. So, first up on our matchup of the day is Stegosaurus versus Allosaurus, the battle to see who is the supreme champion of the Jurassic period. First in the corner is Stegosaurus. There he is, standing next to a man who is looking surprisingly nonchalant, not really concerned that there's an elephant-sized reptilian beast covered in spikes standing next to him, but he has reason not to be too afraid. Stegosaurus was a gentle plant eater, but that doesn't mean he's a pushover. I mean, first most striking feature you'll see of Stegosaurus is these fancy black back plates. Now, some of us eat our dinner off plates. Allosaurus is probably thinking, great, Stegosaurus served with a plate so I can eat him. but are the plates actually of use? Can they actually help Stegosaurus in battle? Well, as it turns out, when you look at the position of them, they're kind of on the top of his back. So his flank and everything is kind of exposed. And then there's blood vessels that we found on the plates as well. So if they were to take a whack from teeth or claws, it would probably hurt the Stegosaurus quite a bit. So they probably weren't actually being used for direct defense. But what we do know is that you can kind of see it in this gif here, that what, when Stegosaurus felt threatened, we think it could actually rush blood up into those uh, blood vessels and make the plates shine really bright colors, which would make it look bigger and more intimidating. So rather than actively fight, it might actually be able to scare off its attacker before it actually having to get dirty. But, uh, you know, if he's coming up against a big, particularly ferocious opponent, they mightn't be intimidated. So that's where uh, it has to use other things. Now, in the 1920s, or the stupid ages as we like to call them, uh, a t really interesting theory was uh, proposed about Stegosaurus' backplates. They thought, instead of standing up as we usually see them, maybe they were out to the side and enabled Stegosaurus to fly. <laughs> and as you can guess from like a four-ton animal, as you can see him hurtling off this rock face here, it just doesn't work, you know. This wasn't science, this was madness. And there's actually a little man running away from the Stegosaurus there, so I don't know. Everyone knows that uh, Stegosaurus was long gone, so were most of the dinosaurs before people came around. So I think there was a f what I would call a flight of fancy here. I think this might have been a scientist who may have had a few too many drugs that day. So Stegosaurus could not fly to escape from Allosaurus, and if the Allosaurus wasn't intimidated by the backplates, it would have to fight for itself. 
And this is what used to do the damage. This is the business end of Stegosaurus. Four, uh, four spikes, they're over a meter long, so they're like nearly as big as a person's arm. Uh, so, you know, swinging around the tail like that, you know, if you were to get on the receiving end of that, you'd be having a pretty bad day. Uh, scientists, we like to call the uh, spikes the tagomizer. Uh, that's a weird name, it's kind of cool, but um, there's a weird uh, origin to that story. It's an old far side Gary Larson cartoon where he was uh, saying, now this end, we call it the tagomizer after the late Tag Simmons. So Tag Simmons must have been the poor unfortunate soul that discovered the tagomizer the hard way. Oh well, I guess the Stegosaurus accidentally in, uh, invented the kebab. So, despite its really strong uh, defenses and good weapons, Stegosaurus had a terrible, terrible weakness. It was stupid. And I mean really stupid. I know it's a stereotype to say that dinosaurs were stupid. Not all of them were. A lot of them were quite intelligent. But Stegosaurus really let the team down. Stegosaurus, despite being nearly as big as an elephant, had a brain the size of a walnut. And usually you can tell a brain to the, compared to the size of Bozzy gives you a good idea of how intelligent an animal is. So Stegosaurus probably wasn't doing much thinking at all. Like what was Stegosaurus thinking about? It probably was just about thinking about the food that was in front of it. So not the brightest tool in the shed. So as Gary Larson, he really liked to give Stegosaurus a hard time. He kind of uh, had this idea of Stegosaurus walking over the hill, walking through the fields, left, right, left, right, boom, into a tree. Now, I don't think Stegosaurus was that dumb, but in fairness, you know, where else Spike here in the Lamford Time scene falling down a hole, that's probably, you might think, okay, that's a bit ridiculous. I think they're pushing it a bit too far. They truly they went, that's stupid. And they're pretty stupid. We've got a lot of fossil evidence to see that a common cause of death in Stegosaurus was getting stuck in the mud and eventually dying of starvation. Now, I don't know about you guys, can I get a show of hands, has anybody ever got stuck in, a mud, in the mud and starved to death? <laughs> uh, a few jokesters aside, um, I, don't, I think we're actually pretty safe that not too many of us have done that. So there's Allosaurus skulk up in the background thinking, this is going to be a walkover, lads. But anyway, Allosaurus comes in, shaking up, there he is, doing his stretches, he's ready for a fight, you know. So Allosaurus, we like to call him the Lion of the Jurassic, because uh, in the Jurassic period, before the likes of T-Rex and Velociraptor showed up, Allosaurus was arguably the top predator of its time. So what did it have to fear from Stegosaurus? Let's see, well, let's see, did it have the tools to take down a creature like Stegosaurus? If we look at its size, there it is compared to a person. This, again, this person is super nonchalant. Uh, I guess he's probably not too fearful because Allosaurus is looking the other way, but he is standing dangerously close to the back end. If Allosaurus were to pass gas at any given point, that guy could be in a world of trouble. So we get the idea that Allosaurus is probably not as heavy as Stegosaurus, bit taller, a bit longer, you know, so size-wise they're kind of evenly matched because Stegosaurus be a bit bulkier. So we see that, we look at the Allosaurus' skull, you know, those are some serious teeth it's got going there. It's like having like 32 steak knives inside your head. So that's, those are some serious weapons, you know, they could cut through flesh pretty easily. But when we uh, looked a bit closer at Allosaurus, you know, the muscle attachments in the jaws, they calculated that Allosaurus had a surprisingly weak bite. Even though it was seven times the size of a lion, a lion's bite is actually stronger than that of Allosaurus, which is bizarre. So here is a fanciful idea of a lion chasing away an Allosaurus who's really like, oh no, I can't believe this little hairy guy is bearing me. Lion's like, ha ha, I am the king of the jungle, and you're extinct. Ha, 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 ha. So anyway, but when it begs the question, if Allosaurus is seven times bigger than a lion, and has all these steak knife teeth, but a really weak bite. What exactly is it doing with them? You know, it seems like a waste. Uh, the answer is only been figured out. <laughs> but why? Um, speaking of but why, did you notice that Velociraptor here? The, the, the claw was on the foot, so he's not doing this, he's kind of gone. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of a weird one. But the mystery was solved recently, and um, the answer was actually far more brutal and savage and barbaric than we actually ever could have imagined. So remember I said the jaw muscles were quite weak? There they are now. But what we did notice was the neck muscles are really strong, really overdeveloped. So we actually, and then we looked at how the jaw could flex and it could open ridiculously wide, like terrifying. Like that'd be like if, you, if a person's mouth came down to their belly. It, it's, it would be a horrifying sight to see. Its gait was way larger than even a T-Rex. So it was obviously doing something. So they figured out between this massive gait and this really strong neck, it could swing its head at you like a hatchet. 
who would come at you and bludgeon you repeatedly with its face. Getting, it's like being stabbed repeatedly by 32 knives, which would just cause horrible shock and blood loss. If the horrifying sight of Allosaurus coming at you like that didn't get you, I'll tell you what, the blood loss might. So, this was a savage time for savage people, or rather, they're not people at all, they're dinosaurs. So, we have to say, who's going to win this fight? Killer ever to have lived in world history? I think we, okay, if you're a Stegosaurus fan, I think Stegosaurus is going to win, give me a... <laughs> No takers. If you're an Allosaurus, give me a ah, Yeah, yeah, we think Allosaurus is gonna win. So, uh, in actuality, Stegosaurus won. Yes! Yeah, this guy! Oh, yes, he bet on the outsider, and now he's rich. You know, you're saying, but, but how do we know? How do we know Stegosaurus? He's stupid. How could he have possibly won that fight? Well, we all, as always in science, we look to the evidence. This is an Allosaurus bone, okay, down around here, around the uh, pelvis region. So uh, it had a really big hole in it. And if you stick a Stegosaurus spike in there, it matches exactly. So Steg or, or Allosaurus must have at one point underestimated Stegosaurus and tried to sneak up behind him. And you don't sneak up on the business end of Stegosaurus, because we all! Oh, right where it hurts. I'd say the scream of Allosaurus, it was probably a swift and horrific death. In fact, sorry, it wasn't swift at all. We've seen bacteria growths around the wound, so it probably took Allosaurus a long time to die. So, moral of the story is, do not mess with this thing and his magic tagamizer. He may be stupid, but that never stopped Donald Trump taking over America. <laughs> Hey, I told you to be dinosaurs in this show. <laughs> All right, so next up we got uh, everyone's favorite uh, villainous or turn good guy, uh, Velociraptor, up against Protoceratops, who, as I said, was one of the distant forerunners to the famous Triceratops. They both lived in Mongolia in the Cretaceous period. That's an interesting fact. Most of the dinosaurs from Jurassic Park lived in the period after the Jurassic, uh, the Cretaceous, which was, uh, I think, Velociraptor was about 80 million years ago. So, this is the image we all know in our heads when we think Velociraptor. This is what they look like in Jurassic Park. I know what you're thinking. You're like that kid in um, the first Jurassic Park film. He says, that doesn't look very scary. More like a six-foot turkey. Well, actually, kiddo, in real life, more like a three-foot turkey. <laughs> yeah. We actually found out that a lot of species of dinosaurs had feathers. They are actually the distant relations of birds, probably the ancestor of birds, in fact. And Velociraptor is one of the many species of dinosaurs that we found with fossilized feathers on it. So think of an angry chicken coming after you with knives on its feet and knives on its hands and little bitey teeth. You know, just because it's small doesn't mean he can't be feisty. So there he is compared to Blue in Jurassic Park. The real deal, he's a little bit smaller, you know. But that doesn't mean he sucks, you know, he, he might still be, you know, you ever fought a short man in a fist fight, they're feisty, you know, we're feisty, rather. So, the famous uh, business end of Velociraptor, they're famous for that sickle claw, you know, in Jurassic Park, uh, Sam Neill's like, he slashes at you with his sickle claw around the belly, disemboweling you, which is just terrifying. But then, uh, science came along and had a look at Velociraptor's claws and he realized they're really pointy at the end, but this bit here, kind of blunt, not particularly sharp, so wasn't actually made for slashing, which is a bit strange. It was more for pinning. So what they think was that the Velociraptor actually would kind of jump onto the back of an enemy dinosaur and just kind of dig in the claws. They might struggle around for a while, but they just couldn't get rid of him because he just stuck in so tight. So that would leave Velociraptor and Amchui to finish them off with the teeth. No. Yeah, nasty teeth. Remember how Allosaurus's bite was weaker than uh, lion's? Velociraptor, despite the wee size of them, about yay big, had a bite as strong as a lion's. So that was how they were doing the finishing job. The coup de tas was done by the mouth, the feet were just there for holding the prey at bay. So if your name is Protoceratops, you're about the size of a Labrador, this is gonna, this is gonna cause for trouble. Because Protoceratops is a plant eater, but he has some defenses. Protoceratops' head is built like a battering ram. As I said, it's an early precursor to Triceratops. It hadn't evolved horns yet, so it would just have to kind of just headbutt its enemies and hope that they'd get knocked over. And then it could maybe give them a good bite with that big beat. beak. Never underestimate a beak. If your hand went in there, it's not coming back, even though Protoceratops eats plants. But for someone who's got to put its hand in their mouth, it could maybe make an exception. You had no business putting it there. Like I tried to feed one one time, and it just really it didn't end well for me, I tell you. Some people tell you a hog and they have to take a finger. They's lying. 
Nippy beasts. So who wins? Who wins this? Uh, who wins this battle? Do we think that Velociraptor with its uh, really strong bite and pinning claws, or uh, the stun hun that is Protoceratops? Um, who do we think uh, would win in this furious battle? Okay, if we want Velociraptor, make that weird <laughs> noise that they make in Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Calling for help. Honk honk. <laughs> okay. So we got a, got a few Velociraptor heads in here. Uh, for Protoceratops, I don't know what Protoceratops said. Let's say Moo. Moo. <laughs> All right, people like Protoceratops. Maybe we can head but its way to victory. Unfortunately, this is a double count out. This match was declared a draw. Because how do we know? I'll tell you how we know. We found evidence. There is one of the most famous fossils of all time. It's kind of like Romeo and Juliet. But in fact, <laughs> they were fighting, okay? Um, so what happened, what they reckon happened was these two were having a good old fight, you know? And you can see the Protoceratops got a hold of the Velociraptor by the, the wrist and was like crushing it to death. But the Velociraptor was trying to get some kicks in, was probably giving it a good stab in the belly. And what might happen is they might have bungled over into a river or maybe overtaken by a sandstorm, but entombed in what we call eternal Mortal Kombat. So there's a replica of this um, fossil down in the Ambassador tier at the moment. Finish him. Finish him. <laughs> Double KO. 65 million years later, people make jokes about you. Oh, the indignity. So, just shows you, you know, Velociraptor, powerful predator, uh, but pretty good predator, in fact, but, you know, Sometimes bit off a little bit more than it could chew and got, got the squash down. So that's um, actually that's very interesting. Uh, I say a legend is born because um, in the area that Velociraptor and Protoceratops were discovered, uh, Mongolia, that's where the legend of the griffin, a strange beast with four legs, feathers, and claws, and a beak. Uh, was first uh, invented. So what they think might have happened is people back in the days before they knew what dinosaurs might have found the mashed up bones of Protoceratops and Velociraptor put them together and come up with this uh, mythical beast. So, you know, it was a good effort, but they were completely wrong. But, um, you know, hey, if, hey I, I never discovered a dinosaur, what can I say? So we're two fights into uh, our four uh, fight lineup. So I think I, what I'd like to ask the audience is uh, who wants some prizes? Oh hell yeah, you want surprises. Okay, so what? this is going to be a bit fun. I'm going to go on a little walkabout. I'm going to start picking out random uh, people in the audience. They just got to answer uh, ridiculously difficult dinosaur questions. And um, they could win a prize. So I see uh, Superman over here. He looks, like, uh, he looks like he's fit for the challenge. Um, so the first thing is the Dinopedia. What we're going to uh, ask you was a very, very difficult question. Okay, so I hope you was paying attention. Oh, if Allosaurus and Stegosaurus fought, who would win? Uh-oh, someone's going to pay attention. We have our first winner. Alrighty then. Okay. Next up, next up, next up, next up. I'm going to go. This guy, Mighty Megasaur, okay? This guy up front, I think you, you know, you, you came in early, you sat at the front. So I'm going to have to ask you a difficult question. This guy here with the big head and the small arms, lots of teeth, what dinosaur is that? That's the one, T-Rex. All righty then. We have another winner. All right, because people down the back don't always get cool stuff. Uh, any kiddos down the back? Okay, we, okay, we got them. Okay, what I want to do is I want to give you, oh, Play-Doh, yeah. Dinosaur Play-Doh said. Oh, man, now, now I realize why I don't go to the back too much. All right, who we got here? Ah, oh, hey, hey, little dude. Hey, what's up? Okay, so I'm going to ask you, uh, like, this is probably the hardest question you'll ever be asked. The hardest question ever going to be asked, what's your favorite dinosaur? Velociraptor. Velociraptor. I believe that is correct. <laughs> Good man yourself. Alrighty then. Yeah. Would have been really cruel to just go, no, you're wrong. <laughs> Alright. I got uh, this guy for the guys down back because they, uh, around the very back, they put their hands up and I think they deserve a go down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, this, this kid, he looks like he can do this. He's got a big knife, so I better actually, I better get him a prize. Okay, so this dinosaur is Spinosaurus, right? Do you reckon Spinosaurus walked on two legs or four legs? You're right, because Spinosaurus was one of them lucky dinosaurs that could swap between them. You could walk on four, 
or two. And he could swim, so there was really no way of getting that one wrong. Okay, I've been kind of ignoring the folks over on this side of the room, so don't worry, I got more stuff for you. Okay, jigsaw time. All right, you know what? Save me the run. Grab a few prizes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, who we got? Okay, someone has a wonderful laugh. Okay, you guys. There. I, I see Yoda. All right, Yoda. Yoda. Yoda, uh, what color do you think dinosaurs might have been? I don't know. You know what? That's right. We don't actually know what color most of the dinosaurs wear. with this man. Okay, I think Spider-Man hat here wants something here. So we're gonna give you a book, if you can answer the question correctly. Okay. We... Whoa! Okay. Um, when... Oh. What was the name of the time when the dinosaurs lived? Jurassic or Cretaceous? You're right, because it was both of them. <laughs> Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, we got this guy here. He looks very happy. Would you like Triceratops or Pterazinosaurus? The Pterazinosaurus. Good choice, good choice. It's my favorite dinosaur. I'm gonna be a little sagging this guy away. See this blue fuzzy stuff here? What do you think that might be? There's a clue, cause um, remember how dinosaurs are related to birds? What could that be? Feathers, yes! Pterazinosaurs have feathers because they are related to birds. And I think I see a gentleman here. Hey, would you like to win a Triceratops? I'd say you might. Sure, what harm? Okay. Triceratops name means tree horned face. So count the horns in this guy. How many horns has he got? Three horns is right. Congratulations, you win today. <laughs> Smart group, I'm not looking forward to the Q&A when they get to ask me questions, I'm gonna be so screwed. All right, so uh, we're just a little halfway point. So uh, the next one is, I suppose, the main event, the one you've all been waiting for, the grudge match of the century, 65 million years in the making. T-Rex versus Triceratops, that's right. The tree horn face, possibly the ultimate defense mechanism in the dinosaur world of Triceratops versus Tyrannosaurus Rex, who was a bruiser, a biter, and an all around not very nice guy. So, who will win? In the blue corner, we have Tyrannosaurus Rex. The name means Tyrant Lizard King, and they gave it that name for a reason. It is one of the largest meeting dinosaurs ever to walk the earth, and it is probably the strongest as well, but we'll get to that bit in a minute. If we look at its size, T-Rex was in a terrifying weight class. As tall as a giraffe, heavier than an elephant, could step on a line, but he's actually in good mood, he's stepping over the line, and the nonchalant man feels safe, hidden between the giraffe and the elephant, thinking he couldn't possibly go for me. I'll just wait here and hope I don't die. So while seven tons of Tyrannosaurus terror walks away in the other direction. Bigger? No. Better. That is Allosaurus, the guy that we saw earlier. He used to be the king of North America. Not anymore. There is a reason why Tyrannosaurus took over North America. They evolved in China first and they saw a land bridge going over to America. They saw the Allosaurus over there living up and they said, fancy me some of that. So they crossed on over and they said, get out. Allosaurus said no. Allosaurus died. So, you know, Allosaurus was brutal. It could throw its head at you you know, and stab you with knives, but look at the bulk on T-Rex. He would just take that and then squash you with his big mouth. Look, this is Muscle Mountain that is Tyrannosaurus Rex. Not just was it like a bit longer, a bit taller, it was also bulkier. Everything about Tyrannosaurus Rex is muscle, muscle, muscle. It was strong. It was built to fight because when it evolved over in China, it evolved surrounded by armored dinosaurs. Everybody out there was on steroids. They're all just looking for a fight. So when T-Rex moved to North America, no one was ready. So T-Rex obviously hit the gym, big strong neck, big strong jaws, big strong tail, legs could march at you really qu surprisingly quickly. Everything is strong about him except his little arms. <laughs> Because poor old T-Rex, he skipped arm day. I know that's the topic of fun for a lot of people. Well, you know, T-Rex doesn't care. Because T-Rex had a secret strategy. It didn't need arms. In fact, 
Small arms means less weight at the front, means you can have a heavier head. All the better to bite you with. Don't forget, Tyrannosaurus Rex had sharp teeth, like Allosaurus, but not only were they thin like, or they weren't thin like knives, they were sharp like knives, but they were thick. Thick, because they could bite through just about anything. Tyrannosaurus Rex, we measured it, had one of the strongest bite forces of any animal. The strongest of any animal ever to live on land. It, if you uh, remember that scene in Jurassic Park where it tears the roof off a jeep, that's not, that's not science fiction. That would have, it would have been easily capable of that. That's how strong Tyrannosaurus Rex was. It would bite through bones. That's right, other predators like Allosaurus before it, if they ate the meat off a planting dinosaur, that was it. T-Rex picks up the bones, cracks them open, it sucks the marrow out. Then it eats the bones. We've seen it because we've found T-Rex poo. It tends to have bones in it. It's terrifying. So, lion nil, Tyrannosaurus Rex won. Remember how the lion had a better bite than Allosaurus? Tyrannosaurus Rex had a bite stronger than 12 lions put together. If this guy bit you, there was no coming back. You didn't have to lob his hand, he's just gonna come down on you, crunching through you like you're a packet of crisps. But not only was he the strongest of the dinosaurs at the time, in terms of biting force and power, it had brains as well as bronze. When we compare the brain of Tyrannosaurus Rex to a similarly sized median dinosaurs, its brain was twice the size. And when we look at the parts of the brain, we can tell that while it wasn't a huge intellect, it had really good reflexes, very good depth perception. All these senses that were tuned in to hunting and fighting other dinosaurs. So if you think about a boxing match when you see pro boxers, they don't just go in, swing, swing, swing. Allosaurus did that. That was old school. Tyrannosaurus Rex was a precision fighter. Not only strong, could pick out the weak points and just go for them. So would probably be going in for that critical strike any time. Not too many things survive being hit by a Tyrannosaurus. So... Pearl Triceratops is probably wondering, uh-oh, they've really been bigging up the bad guy for a while now. Um, I'm just gonna stand over here and hope that a miracle will happen. And uh, like Stegosaurus, he won despite himself. I don't know, Triceratops, you know, you're in trouble. But where there is attack in Tyrannosaurus, there is defense in, in Triceratops. Everything about Triceratops was evolved specifically to try to counter Tyrannosaurus Rex. I mean, we look at the size, Tyrannosaurus Rex, he's taller. He's got a good biting arc, but Triceratops' only hope was this great neck frill to protect its vulnerable neck. It had this shield of bone and big, big uh, horns, which were well over a meter long. If it could catch T-Rex off balance, it could possibly impale the Tyre <coughs> Lizard King and pull off the shock of the century and dethrone the king. But that's easier said than done. When we look, in terms of attack, Triceratops would have a big beak, it would probably squash a person, as this dentist is very brave and about to find out. Um, but biting against Tyrannosaurus, when we look at the size-wise, he's not going to get a good bite in. So forget biting. It's going to have to be down to the horns. But if Triceratops charges too soon, what if T-Rex steps out of the way? He'll expose his vulnerable flanks. So Triceratops is going to have to hold, its, hold on, stay patient, and try to like block Block, block, block. You know, do you ever play like Street Fighter and you're fighting against someone they just sit in the corner and block, block, block until you get frustrated and then they just knock you out and it's really annoying. I heard groans there. Yeah, we've all been there. That was Triceratops' only hope in this fight. Defend from the front, ladies and gentlemen. Unlike most of the uh, relatives of Triceratops who didn't have T-Rex to worry about, they had um, kind of air sacs and hollows in their frill, which is mostly just for display. Triceratops was like, no, screw that. I need solid bone, I need to protect myself, I need to get my horns in there, and I need to just try and somehow defeat this monster. So, who wins? Do we think that the awesome might of muscly Tyrannosaurus and his amazing jaws will overpower Triceratops, or can Triceratops just hold the line and try to just get that critical strike in and maybe, just maybe, go for the soft underbelly of Tyrannosaurus Rex? If you think Tyrannosaurus has this in the bag, give me a... Or just say T-Rex. All right. There we go. I think mine sounded a bit like Chewbacca with a cold. But uh, so, some much, much, much better uh, impressions of uh, T-Rex here. So sounds like I've got some Rexy fans. And if you're a Triceratops fan, give me a really big moo. Ooh, wow, there was some awesome. Who was that made a cool grunting, squealy thing? That was awesome.
Oh, hi, toy. <laughs> I thought there was like an amazing voice actor in the audience. <laughs> like, I was like, get up here. Actually, long live the king. As far as the evidence goes, in a one-on-one -on -one fight, Tyrannosaurus Rex could probably beat Triceratops. We found a lot of uh, evidence of Triceratops with, that have been eaten by Tyrannosaurus Rex. In fact, uh, we see that what seemed to be happening to a lot... It is ginormous, it's terrifying. Um, what seemed to happen to a lot of uh, Triceratops, possibly after they're dead, hopefully for their sake after they're dead, they seem to have their heads ripped clean off. So this is how strong Tyrannosaurus Rex was. Maybe in a fair fight, Triceratops could have had a 50-50, 40-60 chance of winning, but when do predators ever fight fair? If face-to-face, -face, it might set a chance, but T-Rex, like any hunter, probably only attacked when the odds are in its favor, so that would put the tip the scales of balance in its favor. More evidence that we found, though, I, I'm really over-relying on that, I forgot I was there again. Uh, more evidence that we found was this uh, fossil, which is found in Montana. Uh, it's kind of hard to make out what it is, but uh, over here on the left is what we thought was a dinosaur called Nanotyrannus. Well, like it looked kind of like a small, more agile T-Rex, but further research suggests that it was actually a teenage Tyrannosaurus Rex. And over on the right is a, um, uh, what appears to be a fully grown Triceratops. So there was some teenage kicks going on, you know, little Tyrannosaurs, they weren't afraid to pick on guys bigger than them. Unfortunately, a swift kick to the head smashed his skull. But he seems to have got a good bit of offense in and maybe managed to take down the Triceratops as well. Which is pretty good going, because that's an accurate size depiction, you know? That would be like me beating up, I don't know, any full-grown man. Um, so, you know, you got to say, fair, fair, fair play to him. So, uh, like, that's the thing. So, if a, if a, if a not fully grown T-Rex could actually get a draw with a Triceratops, then surely the real deal is more than well-placed to win in a, in a fair fight. So... That makes you think, no wonder Triceratops moved in herds. You need to, the safety in numbers when this tyrant is on the move. So that kind of concludes all of our dinosaur fights for which we have absolute direct evidence for. But the next battle is something that people were just asking me to throw in, so it was kind of a late addition to the party. Uh, the battle for the sea, ladies and gentlemen. The Mosasaur from Jurassic World against the mighty Megalodon shark from uh, The Meg, that new movie, and the books that it's based on. So I suppose I'll tell you a little about these critters. The Mosasaur is a relative of uh, modern-day monitor lizards that had uh, totally adapted for life in the sea. Um, they were believed to be the supreme predators of their time uh, in the sea. They lived at the same time as Tyrannosaurus rex in an uh, inland sea in North America. So they would have been larger than T-Rex. They would have been about the length of an articulated truck. So pretty big beasties. And I know this... Uh, picture from Jurassic World isn't totally accurate because we can see like crocodile-like scoots on its back, it didn't have them, its skin was more like a shark, really streamlined, so it was super, super fast. But this is what's kind of cool about Mosasaurs. See the way they have teeth? Like, like most predators have teeth, they had second teeth just growing out of their gums. So if something was unfortunate enough to get in there, it wasn't getting out. The teeth were perfectly formed that if it got you in, and might, you might have got stabbed by teeth, they curved backwards. So the only way to get off the teeth was to go back in further than the mouth, Back in for the mountain. Well, sayonara, friend. So it's a pretty grim way to go. Well, then uh, something happened 65 million years ago, and the mighty Mosasaurus, they disappeared alongside the giant dinosaurs. It seems like a meteor impact took them out, which left the seas ripe for the picking. There was uh, an opening for a new predator to take over. Millions of years later, uh, the mega shark, as we call him, Megalodon, a shark uh, that was, oh gosh, think of a great white. A great white is about 20 feet long and probably weighs about four to six tons. The megalodon shark is about 60 feet long and weighing about 30 to 50 tons. It was a huge beast and uh, it uh, hunted whales. That's how devastating this creature Like a uh, great white shark, but like Tyrannosaurus rex, its teeth were thick so it could bite through bone, which was helpful because it would attack a whale's backbone and try to shatter it. And the, uh, you know, in the movie, they uh, say, oh, Megalodon is still alive out in the deep sea. It's nonsense. The Megalodon died out more than two million years ago, thank God. Because the ev we know that Megalodon is extinct because uh, we have these things called boats. And if Megalodon was still there, we wouldn't be going out on boats. We would be getting destroyed by Megalodons left, right, and center. So 
as I said, the Mosasaur and the Megalodon didn't live at the same time. So uh, we have to kind of guess really who would win in a fight. So if we look at the evidence, at the time of the Mosasaur, living in the Cretaceous inland sea, uh, was another species of shark, which is a little bit bigger than the great white, called Cretoxyrhinar, which was about half the size of a Mosasaur. So probably not a fair fight. Surely a fair fight would have the Megalodon, you know, fair is fair. So do we, so given their respective abilities back then, would the super fast, super streamlined, multi tooted Mosasaur be able to win the fight? Or would the half sized great white shark type guy, do you think he might win? Considering neither of these things may have lived in water, I don't think we can really make noises other than bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> so um, if uh, we uh, think Mosasaur is going to win this fight against uh, the soon to be great shark, uh, give us some noise, make some noise, clap and hoot, holler, whatever. <laughs> Bad as a sheep. <laughs> so yeah, some Mosasaur fans are. Do we think, despite itself, everyone likes sharks, but surely this shark is outmatched. Who'd win in this fight? Could the shark take the win somehow? Okay. Growing in confidence. Growing in confidence. Well, we found fossilized evidence of a 70 million year old fight that was a very clear winner. Booyah! Shark got the Mosasaur. This painting isn't very good. Well, no, it's an amazing painting. But in terms of size, the, the shark should really be half that size. But we have found a Mosasaur that had its back broke. And we found shark teeth, little tips of the shark teeth embedded in it. So this great white sized shark, despite the fact that the Mosasaur was twice as big and much faster, it took him out. So what we think the shark used a very similar tactic to what great whites use today waited for Mosasaur to run out of air. So when he goes up top to get some air, shark comes down from the depths and kablammo! Backbreaking force, no more Mosasaur. Hey, look, we got sharks today. Do you see any Mosasaurs? There's a reason why there's no more Mosasaurs. Sharks are awesome. So that is the last of our fights, and I hope you've really enjoyed that. But fortunately, we've got about five minutes left on the clock if people want to do a little bit of any questions for the dino guy? So uh, what I'd like to go is, okay, so we got the guy up front, that's first and foremost. I'll work my way back. Okay, um, so yeah, yes sir. Uh, <coughs> I was just uh, wondering, is it true that large dinosaurs had a secondary vein in their body to help control such a large body compared to their heads and all that? <coughs> It's, it's not true. Um, I've heard that um, theory it was uh, specifically related to stegosaurs because they were trying to figure out what it was, like how could such a big animal have such a tiny, tiny brain. So they thought maybe it had this secondary brain that was around the tail area. They thought maybe the tail could move independently with its own brain. Turns out that was just a, a ball of nerve endings. Nothing particularly special, but it was a cool idea, an interesting idea that caught on around the early 70s and still showed up in dinosaur books, even though it has, had actually been proven wrong. But yeah, it's a really interesting question. And did you want to ask a question too? Yes, sir. How deep would the, how deep would the Mosasaur swim? It's a damn good question, because I don't know. <laughs> but um, from what we can tell, uh, the, um, the Mosasaur seem to be mostly relatively shallow water uh, creatures, but um, there's a kind of, do you know what, do you know what an ichthyosaur is? It's like um, they were these kind of, we call them fish lizards because they looked kind of like dolphins, but they were reptiles. We have evidence of a particularly big one called Shawnisaurus. Shawnisaurus. Sean, yay! It's not, I wish it was named after me, but it's not. But uh, it was like big, it was almost as big as a whale, and they actually uh, think it actually deep dived the same way a sperm whale does to go after squid. In fact, there's evidence that uh, once it got caught out by a particularly big squid, so probably wasn't as successful as a tall would. So, Probably not as deep as a sperm whale could go, maybe half the deepness. But, so that was the ichthyosaur, but the mosasaur, probably not particularly deep because it just didn't seem to have the lungs for it to make the journey back, so to speak. Oh, one more. Do velociraptors hunt in packs? We don't know yet, uh, but we have a good idea uh, because we found related species, uh, Deinonychus and Utah raptor, which are often found in uh, groups. So we haven't found that many Velociraptor fossils yet, 
but if it behaved like the other kinds of raptors, it probably did. But that's not to say it absolutely did, because you know lions will hunt in packs, but all the big cats like leopards don't. So unless we find a bunch of them together and can rule out that maybe they just got washed away by a flood or something, you know, we don't know yet, but there's a good chance that they did. Um, and actually what's frightening is, um, we don't know for Tyrannosaurus rex just yet, but um, the, there are other species of Tyrannosaur which we found evidence of uh, pack behavior. So they probably lived in herds or in uh, groups like a pride of lions with young members and old members. In fact, what they think they might have done is sent the small, like uh, slender, kind of fast uh, juveniles out to distract something like a Triceratops. So when he's looking over there going, her? Big Mama just come in and get her in the neck, and that's the end of that story. Because like I said, predators, they very rarely like to fight fair. Who wants to fight fair? You could lose. Um, there's been a hand up for a while down the back. Um, can you throw a mic on? Yeah, yeah, a couple of these. We got time, we got time. Uh, who would be bigger, a uh, Dunkleodosteus or a uh, Mosasaurus? Okay, uh, for the people that aren't as smart as you, I'm going to explain uh, what Dunkleodosteus is. Dunkleosteus was this uh, ridiculous armored fish that lived uh, long before the dinosaurs. It, uh, it like, like a normal fish, but with lots of armor, about the size of a great white shark, and it had this big jaw, almost like a beak, that was like a vice that could clamp down. Was it bigger than a Mosasaurus? No. Uh, Dunkleosteus, like I said, was about the size of a great white, but Mosasaur was like probably twice as long. The, uh, maybe so. Dunkleosteus seven, maybe eight meters in length, the largest mosasaur, possibly 14 or maybe even 16 meters long.